everybody for coming back and joining us again. Um, obviously, our, our last two IVF videos, because we posted a couple in the, in the meantime that were not IVF related, but our last two IVF related videos focused on the retrieval and also why we chose to do a frozen embryo transfer uh, with PGS. So the PGS is the type of genetic screening and ultimately that's why, but please go back and if you haven't already watched those other videos, hopefully they'll help some people out make, make some decisions and also let us know if you have any questions from those <laughs> videos as well. But today we want to hop back into the IVF swing of things and talk about now all the way through the, the transfer. So after the retrieval, we made our way back home. And then the next morning, we got our first update from the embryolog embryologist and she called us um, daily to give us updates. So the first day, like I said, was the day after and she let us know out of the mature eggs that they harvested, how many of those fertilized. And then um, each subsequent day, she would kind of give an update, you know, how they were growing, if we lost any. Um, and she was very upfront and honest. You know, she'd always on the phone say, you know, X amount look great. Um, two of them look good, you know, one looks okay, and two are behind, and so I would always kind of know. Um, and then on day five, she called with the update, and she said, you know, X amount made it to this stage. They got biopsied and frozen, and then we did have a little straggler, um, and that one was just a little bit behind, but she said since he was... I don't know if it was a he, but <laughs> she said since it was still, um, you know, developing and growing and it had, didn't stop, um, that she would give it, you know, another day to see if it catches up because a lot of times they do catch up um, because when they're that young, you know, a couple of hours make a huge difference. So that's why, you know, we, we were able to just wait and see it. And we waited and day six, we got the phone call that that one did indeed make it as well. And so I got biopsied and frozen. This whole kind of waiting for the update game was really nerve-wracking. Um, I was with Natalie for a couple of the calls and then I was by myself for, for well, she, we'll say she was by herself for a couple of them, not me. Um, and what was it? Noon? She always mm -hmm. called at noon. So the embryologist always called at noon to give Natalie an update. And even for me, I don't really tend to get anywhere near as paranoid as Natalie, but even for me, when I wasn't with Natalie, waiting for Natalie to call me secondhand and let me know what information Natalie found out, I mean, even for me, I, I was obviously pretty nervous. So, you know, I'm getting a pit in my stomach. I can only imagine the pit in, in uh, Natalie's stomach, but we really remember, I can remember the one uh, specifically exactly where we were and kind of where we were driving and, and everything. But you get excited and nervous at, at the exact same time. Yeah, and so this may sound a little morbid, but every time, you know, we would get the updates, you know, the jingle, you know, another one bites the dust would always like <laughs> pop in my head whenever we got, you know, bad news or what have you. And I guess it's just because we've been through so much that it was just like, okay, not again. Um, but again, that's kind of morbid, but... <laughs> so, the, the worst, I, I think the worst part here overall is that you're just waiting because it's, yeah. it's a completely out of your control. Once they do the retrieval, you're just sitting and waiting to find out how did the cells grow and multiply. And then once they are bought biopsied, once you know how many actually fertilize well and continue to grow and develop, and then they biopsy them, they freeze them, they send them off for genetic testing, and now you've got a, a 10 day wait period. So again, you're just kind of sitting around and just waiting. Mm -hmm. And that's really what matters. Great if you've got a bunch of, of, um, of grown mature embryos but now you're sitting here waiting are they actually viable to transfer so that's what that 10 day wait period was how many of these were actually viable and transferable yeah and then after the 10 days um our reproductive endocrinolo endocrinologist gave us a call and he you know gave us the report um we had said we didn't want to know um you know the gender of the embryos because we didn't want to be put in a position where we would ever want to choose you know we wanted to do a boy first or a girl first so we said we didn't want to know that it was up to the our doctor to decide which embryo you know he felt would have the best chance 
and then with that um, we decided once we knew which embryo was chosen we said okay well we want to know we want to know the gender um, and then I remember exactly where we were when we found out the gender it was on July 26th and we then came up with the name Paxton Avery so little Paxton Avery our little embryo you know he had a name then <laughs> July 26th we knew about him he had his name and we were we were ready for him so a little over a month before um, before the, the transfer yeah. and then I guess um, what I want to mention too so after um, the retrieval up until the transfer I didn't do anything really different the only thing that I did do is I did go to acupuncture um, because I did I mentioned this in a previous vi video um, but there's lots of studies out there you know showing the benefits of acupuncture um, in general to help with fertility and then also to do alongside IVF to help with um, the success rate so um, like I mentioned in the previous video had I known about you know the wonderful benefits of acupuncture I would have started it even earlier even you know prior to the retrieval um, but then once I found out I definitely wanted to do it moving forward so that's why I did it you know for the transfer um, so I went to acupuncture and um, that was essentially the only thing that was different at that point and and then we basically had two-ish weeks um, of her cycle, I guess we'll just call it the cycle, Yeah. Uh, where we felt like we needed to get some things done. I typically am probably a glass half empty person. If you saw me this morning, I was, I was all flustered about something that really didn't turn out to be a big deal. But um, we really tried to be a glass all the way full uh, position here. So we, we had just purchased a new home and uh, if anybody knows Natalie, she's like a white wall type of person. I mean, no color, it's really odd, like white everything. So I gave in and we, we spent that time painting the house, uh, painting the nursery. So what, what you're seeing us sit here. So we might have a different background at some point here, hopefully <laughs> in the near future, where we're not sitting in front of the rainbow that we painted for Paxton, but, but effectively we spent those two weeks uh, just kind of painting and that's like my least favorite pastime painting but but we did it and um, you know everybody obviously can make their own decisions but for us we wanted to make sure that we once Natalie was pregnant we had no interest in having her be around any fumes um, so low VOC paint still even though she wasn't quite yet pregnant although even theoretically I guess no, so, not yet, because okay. we already waited the two okay. weeks. Okay, so, um, but anywho, we, we spent that time kind of prepping for his arrival, even though it was still obviously nine months away. Yeah, and then so once my I got my period, that was then the first day of my transfer cycle. Um, so when, when that started, we wanted to make sure that we didn't do anything, no chemicals, nothing. Um, so at that point, you know, I started my medication. The beginning portion was just meds, a patch, and then I had um, ultrasounds for them to see how my uterus was doing. And then once uh, my doctor felt that, you know, everything looked great, my uterus was nice and fluffy, <laughs> um, <laughs> then they did blood work to see if I had already ovulated on my own, because obviously we didn't want that to happen, and then I hadn't ovulated, so that's when the progesterone injections started, and then we kind of had a little, I don't know if I would call it a bump in the road, but like a little scare that we would potentially get delayed, I had mentioned that in a previous video, so I started spotting five days before, I believe it was five days, before the before the transfer so like we had mentioned in a previous video you always want to be upfront with your doctor so obviously as much as i wanted to you know make sure that the um, transfer happened you know this month on time um you know it's not something i kept from the doctor i wanted to make sure that i wasn't starting my period because obviously if i did i wouldn't have a lining in the baby the embryo wouldn't be able to stick um so i reached out and they you know immediately had me come in for an appointment and everything checked out you know my lining was still nice and thick um and i just i mean i stopped spotting obviously and everything just continued on and i the transfer was still a go i think this is like the only time when it's maybe appropriate to talk <laughs> about that I, I don't know i'm just <laughs> i'm odd about things like that it doesn't freak me out i just think it's kind of weird to talk about but anywho um the the transfer 
was a different process for us than the retrieval for a couple of reasons. One, we keep mentioning acupuncture, and I'm sure there's that's going to be one of those things I'm going to mention later. We'll definitely be in another video, but um, so did a, we had an acupuncture appointment at 6 a.m. And as a result, we weren't able to stay up in Winston-Salem. So we went through the 6 a.m. appointment. That was the first appointment in the morning. We hopped right in the car, drove up, and then there's, um, at least for hers, and I'm assuming it's for everybody because uh, they want a full bladder whenever you get in there. So they ask you to empty your bladder completely about an hour before and then chug two bottles of water very quickly, uh, like basically, again, an hour before. So that when you go in, it makes it a heck of a lot easier for them to see, I guess, with the ultrasound. And even when you go in with very early on pregnancies, they want you to do that as well. Uh, so that's not odd at all. But anywho, so we got up there. I think we were probably about still an hour and a half, two hours early knowing us. We ended up in a Target parking lot for quite a while. But we went in. And unlike the retrieval, we were able to be in the same room the whole time, obviously. It's not like they have to separate us for <laughs> any odd reason. But we went into to kind of a prep room and the embryologist came back and let us know how the embryo was doing, that you know it had thawed well and, and it had started, I think the words she used were, were expand. Mm -hmm. um, so it had started to expand well and then the other doctor told us you know, how good that was. And then they took us back into the, the actual room to do the transfer. And I think it was the same room they did the retrieval mm -hmm. in, probably set up differently. But if you've ever watched, I, I hope it was set up differently, but if you've ever watched any movies where, uh, where they talk about screw-ups with IVF, you know, getting the wrong embryo or something like that, it was kind of wild because literally the doctor made her verify her name multiple times. They, the embryologist through the door verified her name multiple times. And then literally we got to watch the embryo get transferred via ultrasound. So we actually do have a video of that, a full, it's a, probably a shaky iPhone video. But we have to check and find out if it's okay for us to, to share that. Um, and we probably will, hopefully we'll be able to share that. And then Natalie, when after the transfer had occurred, now they decided that I guess it was ready to go. She was ready to leave. Well, no. So <laughs> what happened was, so they took a lot of pictures because they were doing the ultrasound. So we have a video of it going in like kind of live. But then they also printed off ultrasound pictures. And so he was done and he was like, okay. And he, um, you know, tore the little paper to give us the, I don't know, the pictures he took. And so he handed it to me and like I was trying to be polite and kind of like came up to like meet him halfway because I didn't know. And then he was like, oh no, <laughs> you know, stay flat, stay flat. And then after that I was kind of, I mean, it was one of those things. It was like, I told Ari afterwards, like, oh my gosh, I hope I didn't like, you know, cause the embryo to fly out. Um, and then it was something we like never talked about again. And I knew like if, you know, something would have gone wrong, I always would have blamed you know, me bending up to get the paper, so I guess. So tip, <laughs> lay down. Yes, stay put. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but after that, it was kind of like 15 minutes, and they were like, shoe fly, it's, it's time to leave. And I think it was a half an hour. It, maybe it was a half an hour, I don't know. But literally, up again, unlike the retrieval, where she was on all kinds of loopy meds, and they, they pretty much, we were just ready to go. We hopped in the car, went home, and... When we got close to home, we went right back to acupuncture. So again, acupuncture in the morning, acupuncture after the transfer, and then we went home. So I'm sure everybody's kind of wondering exactly the tips and tricks that Natalie did. I can't really say we because I didn't really do any of them, maybe other than helping keep her calm or, or prepping some food and some things like that. But we'll have a video, whether it'll be just Natalie or, or both of us, I'm not sure. but where kind of she shares all those specific tips that we feel like helped make the, the cycle successful, both leading up to, I think we'll probably, uh, we'll have to see whether we have enough for just one side or whether we've got to split it into two. Um, but anywho, please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, we saw some things earlier today we, where we helped some people on the financial aspect of it. So that's what we're looking to do here is kind of help everybody. So please, again, let us know if you have any requests questions, comments in the in the comments below. So thanks again everybody and until next time.